With the recent patch, Insomniac removed the 120Hz output mode in Ratchet and Clank, but that just proves one point to me. We need to have a proper solution on the PlayStation 5 when it comes to 120Hz displays. Just a couple of days after I discovered the 120Hz output mode in Ratchet and Clank, Insomniac released a patch and this nice feature is gone. At the moment we have 60Hz output and it doesn't matter what performance mode I'm using, it will not change back to 120Hz. So the only option is to reinstall it from the disk, don't update the game. But of course that's a very bad idea because they fixed a lot of bugs as well. Okay, so in this video I'd like to talk about why I think we need to have a proper solution on the PlayStation 5 when it comes to how the PlayStation 5 is actually handling 120Hz screens like the LG CX. So, and yeah, let's start with actually how I like to have it. And I have to show you, unfortunately, the Xbox. Not unfortunately, but the Xbox is a very good example on how it should be handled. So as soon the Xbox is detecting a 120Hz screen, in my case the um, LG CX, you can change the refresh rate to 120Hz for everything. Okay, let's clarify this. Of course, if you're using, um, let's say the 24Hz mode and you're using a Blu-ray disc, of course it will change to 24Hz. But I think you get my point. So this is for the overall function. So if you play a game and it's regardless on what the frame it is from the game, it will output or display the game in 120 hertz. Because again, hertz and frames per seconds, they're not really related. They're kind of, but nah. Okay, let me try to quickly explain what I mean between hertz and FPS. So you can have a 1000 hertz refresh rate display and you can play a game in 20 FPS. There's no issue at all. You can also play a game with 1000 frames per second on a 60 Hertz display, okay? So again, Hertz and FPS are not related to each other. Very general explained. Of course, when we're talking about VSync, tiering, VRR and so on and so on, then it is a little bit more complicated, but to be very honest to explain this, this is a complete separate video. And also because I know the questions coming up all the time, why we should have 120 Hertz over 60 is input lag. On the LG CX we're talking about 7 milliseconds input lag over 14 milliseconds input lag in the 60 Hertz mode. But we're not just talking about input lag, also the motion clarity in 120 Hertz can be better over 60 Hertz, okay? But now enough off topic and I think I will do a video where I Try to explain all these features yeah, in a separate video. Okay, back to PlayStation, back to this problem. So according to Insomniac, they had to remove this feature, I call it feature, because of some issues, visual issues on some displays. Okay, so I'm just thinking loud here and you correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong or right or whatever. So first question what I have, are there actually TVs out there or displays out there they supporting 4K 120Hz and having a HDMI 2.0 input because this can be one of the issue. So according to my info, and please correct me if I'm wrong, HDMI 2.0 is capable of 4K 120Hz in probably 4 to 0 without HDR, without HDR. So HDMI 2.0 can do 4K 60Hz and HDR easily, it's possible. So let's just keep this in mind. So here on the PlayStation, what this feature is doing is enabling the 120 Hertz output when the PlayStation is recognizing a performance mode on a game. That's how I understand it, okay? So unfortunately, yeah, you don't have the possibility or option to output 120 Hertz the whole time. And that's a big problem, but okay. Let, let's continue. So on the video output information here, the TV is reporting or should report to the PlayStation um, what the TV is capable of. So in the, in the case of the LG ZX, 
120 hertz and uh, with uh, YCBCR422 with HDR. So all good, okay? So there shouldn't be any problem at all. So now I tried something. I took my PlayStation and connected, connected my PlayStation to my four year old LCD screen and um, I checked the settings. So I was able to output uh, 4K. So the screen is a 4K 60 hertz and HDR. So they call something like HDR what they called four years back then. It looks awful. Anyway, so what I found is, uh, first of all, PlayStation was just able to output 420. And I think because of HDMI input. Not sure if it's a 1.4, 2.0, I don't know. But everything on this screen was actually correct. So there was no 120 hertz mode because it is not possible, okay? So, but what I found and I was actually very surprised that this option was still there and it was still set to automatic. I mean, don't get me wrong, automatic doesn't mean it's turned on, but I was still surprised because I would actually expect that this, this, this option is um, disabled or grayed out and not even visible because I don't have a 120 hertz screen. And maybe that's the problem what happened on some screens. Okay, so let me try to explain why I think Insomniac had to remove this feature, but uh, to be very honest, it doesn't make sense to me, but okay, let's start. So you start Ratchet and Clank, you change from fidelity to performance mode, okay? So PlayStation is recognizing, hey, now I have a performance mode running and performance mode usually means for the PlayStation 120 Hertz. So that's how it works in Borderlands 3, okay? So now of course the PlayStation needs to check, hey, can I actually display 120 hertz or does the user like 120 hertz? And that's this, this option, okay? So factory setting or standard setting is automatic, okay? So let's assume this is on automatic. PlayStation check, checks this feature, yes, this option is selected. And then the PlayStation should also check what display type is actually connected. And now let's just say we have displays, TVs out there, they're supporting 4K and 120 Hertz in non-HDR, but not in HDR. So that means this display should actually not show 120 Hertz here. I'm just making stuff up here because that's how I understand it. What if the PlayStation 5 is not recognizing if there's HDR enabled or not? Because with this feature here, we can force the PlayStation to output HDR all the time, okay? So, again, I'm not quite sure if my theory here is correct because then we should see this problem in other games as well, you know? But again, just put in the comments what you think about my theory. Okay, so what is the summary for this video? Sony, please give us a proper 120 Hertz option. And the only reason why I'm asking is input lag, input lag, input lag. Again, on the LG CX in 120 hertz, just seven milliseconds. In 60 hertz, we have around 14 milliseconds. That is a big, big, big difference, okay? So Sony, please, if you watch this, and I'm very sure you don't, but if you watch this, just integrate a proper 120 hertz option in the next firmware, okay? And if you have a little bit more time, just include VRR as well, okay? So, okay, that's from my side. I say thank you very much for watching me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.